Okay, we are some 150 kilometers northern from Sarajevo, in close to the town called Zavidovici, Zavidovici town, <coughs> mostly known for its greenery, green uh, environment. It's been used during medieval times and in the la late 19th century as the wooden industry center. Now, when Dr. Sam discovered the pyramids, he got in the media attention of the Bosnia. So everybody started to read and listen about Dr. Sam and about his adventures and about his books that he wrote before the discovery, the alternative history that I was telling you before. In these books, he was mentioning one interesting phenomena most, that mostly can be found in the countries of Central America and the more specific country of Costa Rica. It's often called the country of the stone spheres. Uh, in this country, on the much remote places, uh, in the jungle, deep forests, close to the bushes, inside the soil, you can find hundreds and hundreds of perfectly spherical stones. These stones uh, usually uh, are also polished, perfectly polished, and they come in the perfect circles, some of them even with the carved maps or some interesting signs. So it has been very interesting to see what the geologists are going to say about it. So when you Google stone spheres and uh, explanations from geological level, they're going to tell you that it's something that is in science called concretion. Concretion in, in uh, geology is a little spherical object, usually out from stone, that has a volcanic uh, source or a volcanic past, which means that as the volcano was active, the part of it was rolling down the hill, creating this spherical structure. Now, you can immediately see that the difference is that these concretions in the science are much smaller than the stone spheres that can be found around the planet, and most of them in Costa Rica. Second thing, that these concretions are usually made out of more materials because as they're rolling down, they are collecting different kinds of stones and if they're growing, if they're expanding, they're collecting surrounding material. So they're usually made of more materials. While the stone spheres around the world are made of one of three materials. It's either a sandstone, it's either a limestone, or it's... A What's the name of the toughest rock? Granite. Granite. It's either granite. Some of them are made out of granite. And all three of those materials, they never come in this shape in the nature. Especially not only from one material, like they are all made. But the little pieces of quartz crystal and stuff. So, also, the concretions in science, they are never fully circled because as they're rolling, they're also under the pressure of gravity. So they're usually ecliptical, elliptical, or however you say that. They're not full circles. Well, here we have the size, we have the material, and we have a perfect circle. So geologists couldn't explain that, so they just left it over there, saying that's geological anomaly that consists in the nature. And that's it. And they can't explain something, they just say it's anomaly, and they leave it be. So Sam was writing about it, and when the local people saw that in his books, they started reporting him that the Basa is also a country of the, of the stone spheres. Uh, they said that they could find the stone spheres in the surrounding villages of the central Bosnia, northern Bosnia, and indeed, these stone spheres can be found everywhere around, but the most of them were found in this place over here. This guy over here, you're not going to meet him, he's a clerk. He invited us to check this place, and we found 26 perfect stone spheres, and many of them broken in pieces. He told us that the first time they appeared was approximately a hundred years ago when their grand-grandfathers were telling them there was a huge storm and a huge flood it was coming out of over there, washing this area out, and these stone spheres started to appear and roll down. Some of them got broken, but most of them survived, and when the earth was washed up, they could find all of them here. Then all of a sudden the legend appeared that there are something like the dragon eggs or whatever, there might be a gold inside, so they started 
breaking them with the hammers in order to see what's inside. They didn't find a goal. But from the broken ones that are uh, over here, we could see that they have also lines of melted quartz crystal. Quartz is still, again, crystal is inside them. Then they forgot, forgot about them and later they started to use them as aesthetics. So many of them were taken into surrounding villages, put into the yards just to look nice. Right. So many of the houses have them and now we are in the process of trying to get them back here. We brought a lot of professionals and uh, academics to try to understand this phenomena. What we realized with measuring very specific instruments is that all of them have some sort of vibration which is different than the vibration of the environment of the locals of the normal stones natural stones every single one of them has a vibration and as every single man has the difference within his fingerprint also every single stone sphere has a different vibration for itself they all vibrate on a similar frequency but in the details, when you go to details, they all are this difference with minor little uh, uh, difference. So, uh, we try to understand them as the remainings of the ancient civilizations, of the megalithic civilization that once was living here, and the most probably uh, on their original location, because obviously this is not the original location, on the original location, they were above the underground water. So this water was passing underneath them. And we already were mentioning how underground water can produce this kind of energy or electromagnetic energy. And once it's sent to the surface, you can block it with some, uh, with some uh, structures that can enhance this energy. Most probably, these stones here were once above the underground water flow in a specific formation taking the underground energy the, uh, the energy from underground water and kind of this specific formation they were uh, in they were enhancing each other creating a powerful vortex creating a powerful electromagnetic field that could be used for a different things <coughs> some authors are saying that the people of the past had the much advanced technology, it could be something like a power station for whatever they were using for transport or for themselves. It could be pointed on a specific point of the planet Earth, like some sort, sort of geopuncture areas. It could be used for something else, but obviously what you're speaking about is uh, remaining of artificial um, intelligence that was present here in this area and all around the world thousands of years ago. These structures and others around the planet are actually pointing us that sometimes in the past there was one global civilization that was connecting and connected very well. Uh, they were sharing their knowledge, they were sharing the information and they were sharing the energy. It was a global <coughs> civilization and that is the reason why it can be fine the traces that are following the same origins of thousands of years ago, thousands of kilometers from each other on the planet of Earth. Could we call it the civilization of Atlantis or something that predates Atlantis or whatever that was destroyed? We still don't know. Dr. Sam is mentioning three eras that we went uh, thousands of years ago. One is 100,000 years ago, one is 70,000 years ago, and one is 25,000 years ago. That's when the ice ages were beginning on the planet. These three epochs and on the beginning of each other is actually when we were getting into very destructive wars. Uh, because one part of the civilization wanted to focus on developing the weapons while other ones was trying to in, in get involved with the nature and they were focused more on our spiritual evolution. So. What I encourage you to do is to try and touch, at least be in contact with as many of these stone spheres as is possible, or at least if you can't walk too much, stay close to one of them. Uh, there are stone spheres approximately 20, 30 meters down this flow and uh, 30 meters up when you see the bridge, 
if someone is gonna go through the stream. When you see the bridge, that's where the last one square is. Don't go above the bridge because there are no. But some of the biggest are over there, and some of the prettiest are over there. So maybe take some time, uh, check them out, take a little walk, enjoy this beautiful energy of this magical forest that we are right now. You can feel some ancient vibes here as well. And also try to touch some of them to feel the vibration. Because the vibration, the ancient vibrations and the ancient frequencies are perfect for our meditation. Because as we taste the food that we didn't try since our childhood, and it gets us back in time, you know, it's so nostalgic. So as these vibrations are doing the same, when we are in the environment without artificial sounds, without airplanes, cars, when we can only hear the water and when we can only see the green greenery, when we can only feel these vibrations, we are actually having ourselves the environment, the exact same environment that our ancestors had. Because today we are too much surrounded with artificial stuff that we can't see what they were seeing. In this kind of place, you only see and you only feel what they felt. And this is like tasting the food from the past, feeling the vibration of the past can get us back in the time, having some episodes from the past, answering us some questions and maybe, you know, making it easier to understand what was happening, how is happening, what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. This should be the aim of the meditation. Get back in time to understand and ask some questions. If there are some questions for me, I will be glad to answer. If not, take a time, maybe some half an hour and then later come up there to have a lunch and after the lunch have some free time again if you want. So enjoy this place today. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Or, you know, tasting food from childhood and 